These are all positions that, if you spend time in them regularly, will naturally give you more mobility in every part of your body. Don't think of these as stretches. Just think of them as positions you want to improve. Work on getting into and out of them easily, feeling comfortable, and if you're ready, advancing them. I'll show you how. Seiza. This can be done in two ways. With the toes pulled under, giving an extra stretch for the bottom of the foot and toes, or toes pointed and sitting on the tops of the feet to stretch the front of the shin and ankle. You should be able to do both. Our knees are meant to be able to compress so that the hamstring and calf rest on one another. And by doing this, you'll be able to open up space in the quads, knees, and shins. And if this feels easy, try leaning back and extending the hips. You'll feel a stretch all the way from the knee to the belly button. Squat. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm squatting on a slight hill. And if you look really closely, you'll see my ankle is quite swollen. I sprained it about a week ago. So the hill makes the demands on my stiff ankle far less. I say this because your squat shouldn't feel like you're gonna fall backwards if someone blows hard enough in your direction. So elevating your heels will allow you to get comfy here to the point where you can do some light movement like I'm showing right now. Much of the world sits in a squat quite regularly and if you do it more, you'll be surprised how relieving for the body it can feel to just pop a squat. Downward dog. I've seen some crazy flexibility transformations just from people doing downward dog daily. But when you're first getting started, it can feel awful. So here's a tip. Don't expect to be good at it. Just look for the right sensations and it will improve over time. For the hamstring and low back stretch, just try to lift your butt as high as you can in the air. For the calf and low hamstring stretch, sometimes felt behind the knee, relax the ankle and let the heels move towards the ground. And for a shoulder and upper back stretch, push your shoulders up to your ears, drive your chest to the ground and look up towards your hands. If you move through these three intentions, I guarantee you'll see drastic improvements in your flexibility. Crab. This is the most overlooked position, but one of the most needed in our daily lives. Staying hunched over our work plus lifting weights makes the chest, shoulders, biceps, and upper back tight. The crab allows us to open up all those areas just make sure to push your shoulders down and back to get the most. And if you're feeling ready for more, try doing the one arm crab by reaching one hand straight up in the air. Now you're getting some much needed spine rotation and all this while getting your sleepy glutes to turn on. Long lunge. Most people know you should stretch your hip flexors regularly, but the most common hip flexor stretches are either impotent or way too complex. This position is nice because you just take a big split stance and then try to straighten your back knee, but it's not just about the stretch. This position allows your body to become accustomed to opening the hips while supporting your body weight, which makes this mobility more accessible in the future. Be sure to keep your core and glutes engaged and for more, just increase the distance between your feet. Horse stance. There's a reason why most martial artists spend tons of time in this position. It makes your hips super open. Take a wide stance and then just try to sit your hips as low as you can while keeping your torso upright. This not only opens the hips, but gives you tons of hip strengthening as well. As you get more comfortable here, widen the feet. And to advance this, move from horse stance to a forward fold and back. Your hips will thank me. Hang. Open the shoulders and decompress the spine by doing a relaxed hang. This changed everything for me personally. The key is truly allowing the shoulders to relax up towards the ears 
and pulling the front of the ribs down towards your pelvis to maximize the opening. Now go slow with this. You can even keep your feet on the ground when first getting started. And progression is simple. Just hold on for longer. This method of natural mobility doesn't have to be complex. Take a screenshot of the program on the screen right now and follow along daily. You don't have to do them all at once. You could do a few in the morning, some in the afternoon, and the rest in the evening. Figure out the best way for you to be successful with doing them as often as you can. And one last tip, always make sure to breathe deep and slow. We want the nervous system to be calm. In the comment section below, let us know what you would have added to the list and why. Please support StrengthSide by subscribing and liking the video, and we'll see you in the next one.